Good morning. Happy Tuesday, friends. I am excited today because um, today of Expand Your Preschool Program in 2019, 30 Tips in 30 Days, we are on episode number 21. I don't know about you, but I feel like this month has just been flying by. So if you're joining me, say, hey, Erin, let me know that you're here. If you're coming in on the replay, still want to know that you came and that you are following along and what little gold nuggets of info you're getting out of these 30 tips. Because here's the thing. I have had different studio owners, different teachers reach out to me at various times during the 30 tips and 30 days and tell me, thank you so much. That's a little gold nugget of info that I appreciate so much. I'm going to implement right away. And so hello, good morning, Heather. So if you're here with me, say hello. Let me know that you're here. Let me know if you've had any aha moments, if there's been anything you're like, oh my goodness, why didn't I think of that? Um, but today, I want to give you a little tip about creating calm amongst the chaos. Because if you work with preschoolers, you and I both know there could be times of chaos, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. And there are tips, some tips that I have surrounding how to create calm and chaos. Now, I can't give you all the tips in one day. So this week, I'm going to focus on giving you a few little tips that you can take away and implement immediately into your classes to help you really create some calm amongst the chaos. Now, I am a firm believer in that there should be controlled chaos within your classroom. And what do I mean by controlled chaos? So preschoolers, especially, they need time to get all of those wiggles out, right? I mean, they are just a ball of energy, right? And we all say, you know, said if we could bottle that energy, we all be millionaires, which is the truth. They have so much energy, right? So let me know. Do you think all your preschoolers have energy? If you, if you do, let me know. Shoot me some. Yes, my preschoolers are exhausting me um <laughs> let me know if your preschoolers just always have a lot of energy so there should be controlled chaos and when i say controlled chaos there should be moments that you plan for it to be craziness right and i actually like to do that at the beginning of a lot of our classes i like to give them a moment to get their wiggles out get all that crazy silliness out and we do this a couple ways it might be us playing the hold still game it might be us playing a silly face game right we have different ways of saying this is how we're just gonna uh, be silly right <laughs> we're gonna get them all out we're all gonna laugh we're gonna giggle we're gonna think it's hilarious we're gonna move our bodies all around to try to, number one, expel some of that nervous energy, some of that built up energy that they have inside of them. And the other thing is once they do that and they know it's okay, number one, it helps get some of that out and it can actually help them focus a little bit better in your class. And so we might do it where we get it out the gate, we go for it, we just play a silly game, a hold still, we play the wiggles game, we play our silly face game, we play lots of different little things, and they don't have to take a long time, they just need to be done. And once they know, then that silly game is over, then we set the ground rules. And here's the thing I think that sometimes we forget, is that they're, they're two, three, four, five years old, right? They're preschoolers. And preschoolers thrive on consistency, number one. And the other thing is repetition. Consistency and repetition go hand in hand. And so we have to remember that they need that and they thrive on that. And so by every single class period, right, we repeat what the rules are for our class. Before we get going, for reals, we get all our wiggles out. And then we talk about what are the three rules in Miss Erin's class. And I literally make them repeat them. 
right? I make them repeat them. So if you're coming in, say, hey, Aaron, what's up? We're talking about creating calm during in the monks of chaos um, in our preschool classes. And so the tip today is start out with something that expels their energy, that's high energy, that gets their sillies out, gets their wiggles out, right? So if you have something that you do in your class in the beginning or some point during your class that helps them get those wiggles out and refocus, let us know in the comments. I love us to sh for us to share. So we are talking about that. So then after we do that activity and we get all that nervous energy and wiggles out, then we can recenter. And when I say recenter, we talk about in class what are the rules, what are the expectations. And again, I like to keep up to three. They can remember one, two, three. When we start having five, 10, 12 rules, that's all too much for a preschooler, y'all. They need to have three rules that they know that they can come back to. Now, I'm giving you two tips in one today, but that's okay. So the three rules that I set in my class are this. Everyone comes and sits on their spot, which we'll talk about maybe tomorrow, on their spot, crisscross applesauce, hands go in their lap. That's rule number one, and they all will repeat that with me together. And I say, class, how do we sit in Miss Erin's class? And they will say, crisscross applesauce, Hands go in your lap. Again, turn everything into a song, y'all. If you turn something into a song, they will learn that song and learn that task. And then it becomes ingrained in them. And the more consistent repetition that you give them, the quicker it becomes ingrained in their brains. So they know that's rule number one. If they are to be sitting, they are to be sitting crisscross applesauce, hands in their lap, waiting their turn. Rule number two. Rule number two in Miss Erin's class is that we turn up our listening ears. Whoop. They turn up their listening ears with me and they know that when Miss Erin is speaking, they are listening. Okay. Again, it sets that we are the authority figure. When we are speaking, they need to be quiet. They need to listen. And then that brings us obviously to rule number three. We will take, and depending on what we're doing and the theme of the class, but we might take and pretend we're scooping up a bubble and we're making a big bubble and it's really big. And then, uh-oh, we need to eat the bubble. And we put the bubble in. And we swallow the bubble. And we swallow the bubble and we, I bring down their voices. And we talk about in Ms. Aaron's class, we have quiet voices so we can hear Miss Erin's words. Okay, those are three simple rules. And when done consistently at the beginning of each class and or if they are, if chaos is breaking out and ensuing, you can stop what you are doing and bring them back to the three rules. Okay, friends, we need to freeze. Rule number one, everyone go sit back down on their spot. Crisscross, applesauce, hands go in your lap. Take your bubble, scoop it up, and swallow it real fast, right? So we've got two rules in one. They go back to their spots, they sit down, they recenter, they put their bubbles in, and they say, just turn them on, click, ears are on. We do not be afraid to stop what you're doing in class to recenter them into the rules of your class. You have these rules for them to be safe, for them to learn, for it to be the best learning environment possible. But know that there has to be time for that controlled chaos. That controlled chaos is what allows you to have them focus. To have them focus. So you have to give them that time. So sometimes if you decide I'm not going to start with that control chaos, I'm going to start with my warm up and then we did an across the floor and then they're starting <laughs> starting to get a little restless. Let's do that control chaos activity, right? Let's get the wiggles out. Let's do hold still. They do their wiggles and then they stop and then rein them back in. Okay. 
You can control so much by just your voice and your face. And when I say your voice, I don't mean screaming at them. I mean simply by getting quiet. You control the pace of your classroom. As long as you know the tips and the tricks to control that pace. But I will say this, and we've talked about it before. If you keep your lesson plan action-packed, fast-paced, there's always something, no time for them to get in trouble, right? And you've given them the time for control chaos. You've set the ground rules. You are going to have a fantastic class. But we've also talked about the length of class, too. You cannot expect a preschooler to go for an hour or more. <laughs> I've seen it. An hour or more in one style of class without someone getting in trouble or some sort of chaos ensuing. Because their brains are not wired that way, y'all. It's not developmentally age appropriate for you to try to have them Focus on one thing for that long. So, length of class we've talked about, which helps control the chaos, right? Length of class, action-packed lesson plans, those two. Three, giving them time for controlled chaos, right? Controlled chaos, you control it. You let them get wild and crazy within the parameters that you set, right? Within those parameters that you've set, and then you set the ground rules, right? You have the ground rules. So when you plug all of those things into play, you have you can control the chaos. So I'm excited about tomorrow because we are going to continue expanding on how to con how to create calm within chaos, right? Um, I actually saw a post. It was so funny. I planned on talking about this today, and then I saw a post on Facebook in another group about transition times and it's just utter chaos and so it was so funny because I was like look somebody is asking about this and I plan to talk about it so did you take anything away from this today if so let me know in the comments I always love to know who's with me again um, I did get the question actually the other day um, a lot of people are really excited and they want to come to Atlanta. And of course, I would love to have you in Atlanta with me for our 100K Preschool Dance Blueprint Workshop. But I understand sometimes we have other commitments. We have some competitions out. Um, I actually found that there's some spring breaks were happening quite early um, this year compared to when Easter is. And so we had some people who are on spring break, that sort of thing. And I totally get that. I do want you there with me in Atlanta because it's going to be a game changer for everyone who's there. But I do want you to know this. If you cannot be there with me in Atlanta, I do work with my clients one-on-one -on -one as well. I have two spots available right now for one-on-one -on -one client work this month. So I have two spots available going into February for private clients. So if you cannot make it in March, totally get it. But don't wait. Don't wait to start a mobile program because you feel like I can't make it in March. And so now I have to wait until the next year. Absolutely not. You don't have to do that. So if you are interested in possibly working with me or just want to get on a strategy call and see what's the next steps for you, how do you grow this year? I, and I want you to chat. Let's have a chat. So I'm going to put in the comments for y'all. I'm going to put in there how you can set up a, a strategy session with me. It's totally free. And we go over and talk about how we can get you to the next level, right? Whether that's within your studio space, you just want to grow your preschool program in your studio space, whether it's I need a systems overhaul, overhaul I'm drowning, whether it's I am ready to launch a lucrative pro mobile program, right? Let's talk about what the next steps for 2019 are for you because they can be, this year, y'all, can be an amazing year. It can be an amazing year. So, okay, let's see if that worked. I'm going to put that in there for y'all. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Ah, it did work. So, I'm going to leave y'all there. Let me know. Did you find any value in that today? Because I think that it is going to help you 
create some calm within your classes. And tomorrow, we're going to continue on that topic with another tip. So I'm going to leave you now. Have a fantastic Tuesday, y'all. Get to work. We all have things I know we need to do. And I cannot wait to see you till tomorrow. Bye, friends. Have a fantastic day.